For my first video tutorial at dwcourse.com, I'll discuss the CSS positioning of divs in Dreamweaver. I'll begin with AP or absolutely positioned divs. The rules for absolute positioning are rather simple. AP divs are positioned 1 relative to the browser window or 2 relative to the nearest parent tag with the CSS position property applied. What that all means will become clear as we look at a few examples. I'm going to begin with a simple HTML page consisting of three nested divs. As you can see, div1 contains a paragraph with its title and div2. Div2 likewise contains its title and div3. Now let's return to the design view. As you can see, I've cheated a little bit by already adding some styles for our divs. I've done this strictly for clarity during this demonstration, and since those styles won't affect our absolute positioning, I'm not going to go into detail about them now. For my first example, I'll apply absolute positioning to div3. I'll do that by selecting div3 in the styles palette, and then from the menu, selecting edit. In the CSS rule definition for div3, I'll select the positioning category, and then under position, I'll choose absolute. Absolute position requires us to tell Dreamweaver where we want to place the object. So under placement, I'll type in 50, make sure pixels is chosen from the menu for the top property, and for the left property, I'll do the same. To position an element, we want to define one vertical property, top or bottom, and one horizontal property, left or right. If we try to define both top and bottom, or both left and right, not only are we confused, but we'll confuse our browser as well. Now let's click OK and see what's happened to our div. Notice how div3, like a rebellious teenager, now ignores both its parents and positions itself outside the normal flow of the page. Since neither parent has a CSS position property set, div3 aligns itself 50 pixels in from the top and left hand corner of the browser window. Now before we move on, let's look at a couple variations on this setup. What for example happens if we use negative values for the top and left properties? Once again, I'll open the div3 style definition dialog. This time I'll simply double click on the div3 style in the style palette. That accomplishes the same thing we did with the edit menu item earlier. Once again, in the positioning category, we have absolute chosen for position, and we'll change the top and left values to negative 50. This time, instead of clicking OK, let's just click on the Apply button. That allows our style to take effect, but keeps our window open. As you can see, negative values have the opposite effect of positive values, and our Div3 has moved up and to the left, partially off the page. Next, let's see what happens when we set the right and bottom placement properties. We'll begin by deleting, not setting to zero, but deleting the top and left values. Then for right, we'll enter again 50 pixels, and for bottom, 50 pixels. This time, let's click OK and see what's happened to our div. As you probably expected, div 3 is now positioned in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. But let's take a look in the browser and see what happens there. Now, as we would expect, div3 is positioned in the bottom right-hand corner of our browser window. But look what happens when we scroll. Surprisingly, given the term absolute positioning, div3 scrolls with the page. The bottom line here is that, since we as designers can't be sure of the size of the browser window that we'll be using to view our pages, it rarely makes sense to absolutely position elements relative to that browser window. Fortunately, we have some other options. Let's return to Dreamweaver and explore them. As you can see, I've repositioned Div3 so it's back in the top left corner of the screen. I've done that just for clarity as we move through our demonstrations. As you may recall, AP elements are positioned relative to the nearest parent element with the CSS position property explicitly defined. So let's define a position property for one of Div3's parent divs and see what happens. I'll begin by opening the CSS rule definition for Div1. Once again, I'll go into the positioning category, and this time in the position menu, I'll choose relative. Relative position 
keeps an object in the normal flow of the page. The only difference is that we have the option of reposition it relative to its normal position by using the top, right, bottom, and left properties. If we leave those blank, the object will remain in its normal location, but it'll have a relative position applied. When we click OK, we see now that Div3 has jumped inside and positioned itself relative to the top left corner of Div1. Now let's also apply relative positioning to Div2. As you can see, Div3 has now moved and positioned itself relative to the top left corner of Div2. That's because even though Div1 and Div2 are both parents of Div3, Div2 is the nearest parent, and so it takes precedence. Let's reopen the CSS style dialog for Div2, go back to positioning, and again look at our position property. If you've been paying close attention, you may have noticed that I've skipped two possibilities for positioning, fixed and static. Let's take a look at static. Click OK. Notice Div3 has once again jumped out of Div2 and positioned itself relative to Div1. That's because static positioning is used to remove the positioning property from an element. An element which has static positioning is the same as an element which has no positioning property applied at all, and it appears in the normal flow of the page. That can be a little confusing, and it's not something you'll use unless you get into very advanced CSS positioning. Let's open up the Div2 style definition one more time, and under positioning, this time selecting fixed position. Fixed positioning is similar to absolute positioning with a couple important differences that I'll point out once we've okayed our style. Like absolute positioning, we have to provide placement information. So I'm going to set the right and bottom properties to zero and click OK. Oddly, we don't see any changes in Dreamweaver's design view. That's because, unfortunately, Dreamweaver's design view isn't always what you see is what you get. We could preview our page in a browser, or we could use the live view feature introduced in Dreamweaver CS4. We'll do that by clicking on the live view button. Now we can see our fixed positioning applied to Div 2. Based on the zero pixels we entered for bottom and right, our div is nestled in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Also, Div 3 is now positioned relative to Div 2 since Div 2 has a CSS position property applied. As I mentioned before, there are a couple important differences between fixed positioning and absolute positioning. The first is that fixed positioning is always applied relative to the screen. The second difference is one we'll see when we scroll. With fixed positioning, our div stays put relative to the screen and doesn't scroll with the page. That's the end of our demonstration for today, but I'll leave you with one important reminder. When you're using CSS positioning, it's absolutely critical that you test your pages in numerous browsers and on multiple operating systems. It's always important to do this, but testing is even more important when you're using CSS positioning. Thanks for your interest, and I hope you'll join me for more Dreamweaver tips, tricks, and tutorials at dwcourse.com.